The Arabs will sit in a crouched position for hours on end. And the Japanese love to sit cross-legged. Of course, if you can sit comfortably cross-legged, you might as well try sitting in the full lotus position. You've got to <laughs> get your leg up there, and then get the other one up here. Oh! You get used to it after a while. And if you can do that, you might as well get rid of your legs altogether by putting one up here behind your head. <laughs> and the other one up there. And there. I'll tell you what, though. No, bring tears to your eyes. <laughs> if you're an avid viewer of Heads and Tails, you'll know that in this program it wasn't legs that was a problem, it was noses. Nobody's got a nose like me, except me. How could such noses be? They call me proboscis. And me? Proboscis. Monkeys, we. Pika who? Pika me. Peekaboo. Oh, peek you. peek a proboscis monkey. Oh, I can't do this arm. But confidentially, <laughs> just between you and me, and me, this nose of mine, oh, and mine, is no real nose at all. It's just to make a noise with. That's all. A bit like a trumpet call. A honk honk. What a hooter. What a beauty. Oh. <laughs> Goodness me, I don't know what these young monkeys are coming to. Can't even say their own name. Proboscis, it should be proboscis. Yeah, do you hear all that? Yeah. <laughs> proboscis, you reckon? Mm-hmm. What about it, then? Well, I guess. Here we go. One, two, three. Proboscis, monkey. Well, Heads and Tails began in 1977 when Seesaw took over from Watch With Mother. Programs for the very young children have been on television just about as long as television itself began. If you were under five 30 years ago in, say, 1953, this is what you would have been watching then. Time to go home, time to go home. Andy Pandy was a great success, matched in its time only by some other characters whose way of talking was imitated by the whole nation, the flower pot men and little weed. <laughs> then they looked round for something to play with. And the first thing they saw was the paintbrush the man had left hanging on the nail. Oh, Lord. Over the past 60 years, there have been literally dozens of programs for young children. See how many of these you can remember. Quite right, too. That's no way for clangers to behave. What a lot of Mr. Men there are. I wonder which one we should be meeting next. Can you guess? The cars and the buses and the streets are full of people. In fact, there are a lot of people in a town. Do you live in a town? Mary, Mungo and Midge live in this town. Puppets have always been popular on television. The first big success was a mule called Muffin. We want Muffin, Muffin the mule. Dear old Muffin, playing the fool. We want Muffin, everybody sing. We want Muffin the mule. In 1957, another puppet series began that in its day became the Muppets of the 50s and 60s. 
Pinky and Perky. At this time, Blue Peter, which this year celebrates its own 25th birthday, had a new presenter join the programme. He was John Noakes, who during his time on the programme became television's most famous daredevil. Here he is in 1967, taking part in the mass manning ceremony at HMS Ganges. When I'd reached the top of the ladder, my troubles were about to start. I then had to try to shin up the mast to reach the top called the button. I'm out of breath. And this thing is wobbling up here. I don't think I'm going to do very much. I just couldn't manage it. My legs were feeling like lead. I decided this was the moment to give way to the expert, though changing places on a ladder 127 feet from the ground had its dicey moments. This tradition of attempting daring feats has continued on Blue Peter. A couple of years ago, Peter Duncan earned a great amount of respect from everyone when he took part and finished the first London Marathon. You're doing great anyway, you've got 10 miles to go. I know, I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to speed it up a bit now. You're going to make it to the finish. Yeah. Well done, all the best. All right, mate. You can do it, you can do it. Go on. By now I was feeling exhausted, but when I saw the Tower of London, I knew I could finish. The race had been really gruelling, but with 20 miles completed and the crowd cheering, I tried to forget my aching legs. Everyone wanted to clock their best time, including the world's fastest waiter and the chef I'd met at the start. But times didn't matter as I ran the last few yards up Constitution Hill. Making jokes about Blue Peter has always been a scriptwriter's joy, and some of the most successful Mickey-taking sketches have been on other children's programs like P-L-A-Y, Play Away, who had their go last year. So, you are hop along, eh? Uh-huh. Well, I waited a long time to meet you, Hopalong. Uh-huh. And now I plan to teach you a lesson. Well, nobody teaches Hopalong a lesson. Well, I sure plan to. Uh-huh. 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 And just what lesson are you planning to teach me, Blue Peter? I'm planning to teach you how to make this really useful holster <laughs> out of an old washing <laughs> uh, some sticky back plastic and an old belt. Now, this is one I made up earlier. Well, that's, that's really fantastic. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> um, don't you worry, Mr. Kant, because Valerie and I have got our revenge planned for later. Well, have we? Don't you it? worry, yes, we have. The trouble is, I've never been able to make another thing on Blue Peter without thinking of that sketch. Well, they do say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Mm. <laughs> Mind you, although send-ups can be very funny, nothing breaks me up so much as those moments in programmes when things go desperately wrong. There have been quite a few in Blue Peter, but we're not alone. Play School, Wild Track, Animal Magic and Eyeless and Claire have all had their moments too. <laughs> Try again. Do you like some turnip, do you think? No, I don't. Oh, <laughs> oh she lost the lamb. Look. As you know, on Blue Peter, I make a lot of things, but I've never had quite the problem Johnny Ball had on Play School. Oh, <laughs> Blue Peter had its problems when these girl guides visited the studio to sing around a campfire, but the fire turned out to be quite a bit more fierce than planned. Oh, 
Oh, lovely. <laughs> it's funny, my mother always told me to put a guide in front of the fire. Oh. But, <laughs> but seriously, though, any programme that has animals appearing on it, well, he's playing with fire, because everyone remembers the blue piece of famous elephant, Lulu. I'm sure these two do. But when everything does go right, there are some marvellous items on the programmes, like uh, animal magic. Here's how Johnny Morris pro proved that an electric eel really could produce some shocking results. We'll see if the sign lights up and yeah. see what happens. Now, okay. this is 500 volts if it works. Here we go, then. There goes the, f there goes the food. Terry, in with the electrodes. Is he going to light up the sign? Yes! Oh! 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 Isla Sinclair introduced a brand new kind of program in the song and the story. Here she is singing about a highwayman. Grange Hill has become BBC Children's Programme's most popular drama series. And it was episodes like this one, A Day Trip to the Zoo, that made the school a favourite with millions. Oi! Give that back! Get up! Now, quit. Let go, leave off. And I've done, try, don't try to be such a big head, right? Because you ain't got nothing to be big headed about. See? And you remember that. Let go, leave it out. Oh, let's go. They're only little first years. I don't want to see you ugly mug again, right? Anything you say, Tony P. Look, what happened to the other two? They ran off less than two, didn't they? Call that big one was a bit handy. Where's my bag? <laughs> hey, John, look. Oh, no! How do you get there like that? I don't know. Look, I'll go and get the keeper. No, you can't do that. We didn't have trouble with the keeper as it is. What's in there? <laughs> See, Lion. Look, John, don't be crazy. You're never going in there. I'll have to. I'll just have to. No! Do you think they're dangerous? I don't know. Look, I'm going to get the keeper. Look, shut up, Zamo. Just stand here and keep watch. I won't be in the water, will I? It'll only take a second. Come off it. The Grange Hill School for Young Gentlemen. <laughs> Don't think. They're just as bad as that in real life, you know, Tony. Because I've met most of them. What, all those Grange Hill mob? Yes, they yeah. are. Mm. Now, with all due respect, Tony, mm. you, you are one of children's television's longer-standing presenters, aren't you? Well, it's a very good point to sit down, then. Right, then, if you prefer. Make yourself <laughs> comfortable. Now, before Take Heart, mm. you were in Vision On. Mm. That's something I remember very clearly, mm -hmm. watching every week. How long did you do Vision On for? Well, Vision On started 21 years ago, and we did 15, I suppose, a lot, 15 years of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of my favourite bits from Vision On, a regular feature, was you doing those enormous, and I mean huge, drawings that you used to see from the camera right overhead. Used to do, do them on the airport runways. That's right. Well, there was one time where you drew a hippopotamus. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you did it. And you must have used something like one of those machines that they mark out tennis courts That's with the sort of thing, doing. yes. You trundle but it around. How many times did you have to do that before you got it right? You, well, it, it was, it was a one-off. You see, the point is you can't rehearse it. You can mark out the four corners, and you've got to draw within that. And then it's just in the lap of the gods, and you go trundling around, <laughs> spilling that awful white gunge until you've finished. 
So right. are you, are you be honest with me now, you never ever mark out your pictures first of all before? No, you... no, no. I, th I think if you do mark things out, it, it, your mind goes on the marking and not on anything else. <laughs> now, on Take Heart, you use all sorts of different little things to create pictures. And uh, we've got a sequence of you making a picture from nuts that the metallic variety. Were they nuts or bolts or something? I um, remember that. I'm not sure. If, if, if they were nuts, then it was probably a programme about metal. No, I see it, I see it, I see it. No, that was all about hexagons. And so those were rather nice little units to make, make pictures from. It's an archback cat there. Yes. They always look so easy as well. You always make... I think you, you, no, I think, you encourage I think enthusiasm to... because you make it look very easy. Oh, gosh, look, it's a younger Tony. Isn't that awful? <laughs> Dear. No, the thing is that if you give an idea of a way to make a picture, it doesn't really matter very much how you make the picture or what it's of. It's just something to make it with. Look at that. Oh. Great. Right. Yes, I must admit, it was quite effective. And talking of effective things, special effects on television have developed tremendously over the years. Today, they're used in all sorts of programmes. I wonder if you remember this episode of Grandad, when a cake left over in the oven produced disastrous results. <laughs> I have seen the dear silver that shines in the hair. I've seen all the forehead, all furrowed with care. I have kissed the dear fingers, all toil worn for me. Just like in Grandad, the great thing about Superstore is that, well, you're never quite sure what's going to happen next. It was exactly the same on Swap Shop. I remember one day a viewer wrote in saying, how come you can hear no when you're hundreds and hundreds of miles away on the Obey? That's the outside broadcast. Well, sometimes you just have to tell the truth, don't you? So that cable then runs all the way along to the OB. If you're anywhere between London and Ashburton, could I just ask you please to step over the cable if you see it and try and avoid driving over it because one thing that we would definitely like to avoid is poor old Keith being cut off. So that's the cable at this end and then if you have a look at the outside broadcast. Hello Keith. Yes, it's here as well. It's travelled right down the M5 in actual fact from <laughs> Bristol. Yeah. That's where it went to from London now. And it comes right up my leg here, <laughs> under my jumper and into my right hand ear here. Right, well just in case there's anyone who doesn't believe us yeah. that this is genuine, you know, because there's all sorts of funny people. Oh who, yeah, who you always get them. people who say, yeah. you know, yeah. I've got I've got one end of the cable here. Now, if I give this a little pull, ah. there'll be a delay, but it ought to pull at your end. That's it. <laughs> oh, wait. Look, look, look. Yeah, all right. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to hurt. You couldn't just loosen off the slack a bit. You want a just, bit back? Yeah, just a bit back. Yeah. I think it's caught up. Yeah, I think I've got enough there. No, that'll do, that'll do. No, that's OK now. Might be yeah. a bit at Swindon that's caught. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> not in it at Swindon. Yes, more than likely. If you believe that, well, you believe anything. Maggie still does. <laughs> Mind you, in rent ghost things happen there that make our cable explanation seem, well, quite simple, really. Like the times things started to go wrong in the kitchen. I'm sure you remember this. Ah! Soon you'll be able to dry your clothes properly. I think Jeremy is going to test the wind machine. Oh, no! Oh, oh yes. yes! Oh, no, Jeremy, not in here! Ah! <laughs> There's no fantasy in the world of John Craven. Newsround was the first children's news programme in the world, and using the whole of the vast BBC news gathering resources has shown reports from just about everywhere in the world. This is Michael Burke for Newsround in Paris. 
This is John Humphreys for News Round in Moscow. This is Bob Friend in Hiroshima for News Round. <laughs> Oh, this is Christopher Wayne for John Graven's news round at the Battle School in the Falkland Islands. Well done. A spectacular song and dance routine by all the children's program presenters has become a trademark of the All Star Record Breakers. Here's how he ended the program in 1981. Show them the first-rate sorcerer you are Long as you keep them way off balance How will they spot you've got no talent? Razzle dazzle and you've got a romance Uh, an incredibly small collection of moments from children's programs for oh. over the past few decades. We've enjoyed them and I hope you've done too. Now, we can't have a birthday goodbye without having a cake, can we, Flo? No, no. So, give, give them the old razzle about who it should be who cuts this cake but we decided that it shouldn't be cut by one person but by Hi. two people now the latest children's television presenter and manager of the superstore mr. Mike Reed and a lady that uh, quite a few will remember probably but probably more your mums and dads than you and your grandparents a lady who began broadcasting way back in 1923 60 years ago she's Glasgow's Kathleen Garscadden better known for me The studios then were very different to how they are now. We only had one studio, a very tiny one, with oatmeal drapes all around it, rather dusty and nasty. We had no artists, the engineers, the office boy, the commissioner, they all came in and sang choruses like, <laughs> it ain't gonna rain no more, no more, and Phoenix kept on walking and down on the farm with lots of animal noises. It was great, great. fun. <laughs> well, we've heard a few animal noises here today and <laughs> yes. also seen a lot of nice things as well. Oh, Auntie Kathleen, well. thank you very much for coming down and seeing us. Thanks for and being on the program. Me. Maybe you'll help me cut the 60th anniversary cake. Oh, I'd love to. Great. Right, yes. so we can all have a piece of it. Yes. Who's right. going to count us in? Are we all going to blow? Right. I think so. Deep yes. breath. Why not? One, One two, two, three. three. Oh, that's too loud. There you go. Well done. <laughs> Well, before we eat the cake, we're really going to celebrate the end of the programme with a bang. Yes, for every year of BBC children's programmes, we're going to let off a rocket. So that's 60 rockets in all. So come on, you lot, get moving out of the studio. Oh, that's right. Oh, so whilst we all make our way outside to the Blue Peter Garden, well, we thought we, you might like to hear, again, some of the theme tunes of BBC children's programmes that have made it into the top 20. Only last year, due to Terry Wogan playing his loss, the signature tune of the Sea Tour programme actually leapt into the charts. Good it was too. Come on. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat in his black and white hat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. On my horse. In 1968, a series that included the famous white horses, the Lipizzaner, had a theme tune that reached number 10 in the charts. To the sun, to a world my heart can understand. It's a cheerful warm and wonderland far away. 1980 produced a hit for Mike Oldfield and Blue Peter. One of the most successful hit records came from a children's serial way back in 1961. 
Ackerbilk Stranger on the Shore. On Swap Shop, Noel, Maggie and I made a record in 1981. We were all thrilled to bits. It reached number 15 in the charts. And it was, and this is too, because the BBC special effects department have set up the rockets. So, should we have a countdown? Yeah! Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one! <laughs> and the last 60 years of children's programmes and also to the next 60. Who knows what they might bring. Bye-bye! <laughs>